I want to propose to you that if you're using AI for your work, you should be using long prompts. Honestly, I'm one of the only people in the space that's talking about this, which is surprising to me. And even when I look at the stuff coming out of Google and Microsoft and colleges and universities, people are considering prompts to be these short things, maximum maybe one, two, three paragraphs. And I'm going to tell you why this is kind of crazy. What you're looking at here on the screen is this little framework that I've developed uh, called the ICO framework. All right, cool. So let me get into a concept that is important for you to understand, and it's called the context window. So a context window is basically how much information an AI model can consider when it's generating a result for you. And oftentimes, like the way that we use AI models now is mostly in terms of text and language. So the context window on most of these modern models is very large. This is one of the things that when I'm working with people that they're shocked about. You can put 30, 50, in some cases 100, even 200 pages worth of text into a prompt when you're trying to get something back from an AI model. You should check this out for yourself, but like if you look at some of the interviews with Sam Altman, he says that they had the technology for AI for years before they released ChatGPT. And in fact, what they were doing is figuring out how to make the technology make sense to most people. So then they decided that chatting was the way to do it. And don't get me wrong, chatting with AI models is super interesting and has a lot of applications. But in work, that's not what you need often. Like if you need to produce a document or any kind of content or a strategy or whatever, you don't really need to chat per se. You need the AI model to give you what you want back that's really specific and personalized to you. So to finish this little digression, underneath AI, basically when you're chatting, chatting is not fundamental to AI. What happens is like if I say, you know, Davis, that's me, you know, hey, I want to cook a roast tonight, make a recipe for me. And then the AI says, here's a recipe. And then I say, oh, okay, but actually use carrots. Well, all I'm doing when I follow up with that, hey, actually use carrots, the chat part, is I'm sending back my whole chat history to AI. And then it's saying, okay, cool. Now, what are you going to say next, AI, given this chat history? So that chat history is the context that context window I was talking about, that's the context that the AI is using to know what to generate to give you relevant results back. So basically, you have this huge amount of text that you could hypothetically send to an AI model to get a personalized result back. So the question is, what do you do with that spot? If, if you decide that, okay, cool, I'm going to do long prompts, why, why would I do that? Well, so like here, I'm going to show you in this in this document, which you can get for free, easel.link slash ICO. That'll take you right here. It's free. You don't have to register or anything. And, but like here, in this context, for example, you can put background information. So like how might that, you know, be relevant? Well, this is me. This is my job. This is my school. This is my class. This is my student. This is the data that I want you to use. Here's an example of my writing. Here's what I don't like. Here's what I need to do to reach this goal or whatever. The context can be huge. I have dropped entire Harvard Business Review case studies in as context when I'm working with AI. I went and bought it for like $7 and put like all 30 pages of it into my context so that I could say, hey, refer back to this when you decide to generate a result for me, like when you generate a result. All right, cool. And then so like I want to just finish this by saying like, well, what else would you how else could you do this? How else could you have AI work for you specifically with information that you put in about your situation, your work, et cetera? Well, some people are like, oh, well, I need a chatbot. I'm going to go to ChatGPT and make one of these custom chatbots. But I would argue that that's slow and kind of dumb for most people that are using AI for work because a lot of your data is going to change. Like, let's say that you're, you are a business and you're using AI for content generation. Well, when you use it for content generation in February, it's going to be a really different situation than in November because February is like Christmas has already ended and people are, you know, the holidays are over and people are in a whole different mindset about their life. Your company has changed. You have different data going on. Maybe you have different, you know, promotions or whatever. Then in November, everybody's gearing up for the holidays and they're spending money in all these different ways. So your information is going to change as the world changes, right? Like as you're, you evolve. And if you were to use a chatbot as the way that you use AI with your custom data, you're going to have to update that chatbot, 
chatbot like basically constantly, which is just not feasible. It's honestly dumb. It's going to take you way more time than you need. And I'll just finish this by saying that early studies of long prompts, which I've just seen come out now, I honestly think people are listening to me because, I mean, I do have a lot of students. I've taught about half a million people, and so I do have a kind of big audience, not on TikTok, but in other places. But, um, you know, like, the the they've shown that using a general use model, so that's like GPT-4, for example, like using a general use model with a long prompt, you can get as good of results as if you used a custom trained model with shorter prompts. And some of the examples I've seen is like in the medical field. So if you go in with a long prompt that's excellently designed with lots of context, and, and you're going to see here, I suggest sometimes you want to add instructions and output structure to your prompt. But if you go into like a chat GPT-4, one of these, you know, Google Gemini, and you put in one of these long prompts, you're going to get the results that are as good as going into a custom model that was built for a custom use case. And they did this, in, again, in the medical field. So you could go and take a long prompt, ask it a question about medicine, and get a result that just that is just as good as if you custom trained a medical model and then put in a question for the medical model. So anyway, again, you can get this for free, easel.link slash ICO. But that's my thought on long prompts. Check it out.